Okay, there's a lot of tension about this object. Let's get this straight. This is the paper that's causing some of the controversy. The abstract states, Amoma is the first object of interstellar origin observed in the solar system. Recently, astronomers reported that Amomo showed deviation from the Keplerian orbit at high statistical significance. The observed trajectory is best explained by the excess radio acceleration to the change of acceleration is proportional to 1 over r squared, where r is the distance of Amomo from the Sun. What they're saying here is that the velocity is above the maximum average of a normal comet at the perihelion of 43 miles per second. Most comets are actually under that speed, even at the closest approach to the Sun. Above this is very rare. With Momo, they found it to reach a maximum perihelion of 54.5 miles per second, above the maximum average. To give you some perspective, the space station moves about 4 miles per second. It continues to say such an acceleration is naturally expected for comets driven by evaporation of material. So most of the extra acceleration is not due to the slingshot effect, but due to explosive vaporization from the back of a comet causing thrust, like a rocket. Amomoa's initial approach was about 18 miles per second, before it entered into the solar system. They did not expect it to be over 43 miles per second, let alone 54 miles per second when it approached the sun. One would expect to slow down as it's being pulled inward by the sun's gravity. Near Mercury, it would be about a pull of 45 miles per second. At the surface of the sun, it would be over 383 miles per second. But instead, it actually gradually accelerated past the sun's pull a whole 9 miles per second faster. But still, the sun changed its trajectory. The slingshot effect should not have been over 45 miles per second. But at perihelion, it reached 54 miles per second unless it was closer to the sun than they calculated, but they assure us that they checked their numbers over and over. The astronomers assume it could be due to invisible outgassing, but they have not detected any observational evidence of that. Especially with a whole 9 miles per second faster, they would expect to see something. They expect Momo to actually slow down back to 18 miles per second during early next year. However, recent observations and theoretical studies imply that Amomo is not an active comet due to lack of a tail and no change in its tumbling 6 to 8 hour rotation. And meteors tend to break up and are at lower speeds. So then this paper spends most of its time arguing for one possible explanation like solar sails. The only thing you need to get out from this paper is that they cannot account for the increase in velocity, its unusual shape, its reddish color, its higher density, indicating it probably has some metallic elements, its reflectivity with lower temperature, also its tumbling rotation pattern remains constant even after passing the sun, and its origins is unknown. Also its change in direction was almost perpendicular from its ingress, not quite fitting to the elliptical orbits of most objects. But this may be due to the sun not being able to pull the object inward due to its high speed. However, its unusual dive targeting down towards the sun, about 14% closer inward than Mercury is, and then it passed through the Hablo zone, which statistically seems unlikely if it wasn't bound to the sun. So this path is a little suspicious. The rest of this paper is just these two professors taking advantage of this enigma to advance their real research, which is creating mathematical evidence to show that solar sails are possible so they can promote their real research to make money. Andy kind of admits this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm actually uh, leading a, a project called the Starshot, whose goal is to uh, visit the nearest star system, uh, Alpha Centauri. And I will be speaking about that at the Falling Walls yeah. uh, conference. And uh, uh, that's what inspired me to consider that possibility that maybe it's a light sail. So I think he's more focused on taking advantage of this mystery object to promote his solar sail project. I, I think that's all this paper really is trying to do but also simply stating that they, they just don't have enough data on the object, which is showing some unusual behavior and characteristics. So they're leaving it open to the hypothesis that this could be an artificial object. That's all. They say you have to leave that open because now we're a little stumped on this particular case. I don't think we should read into it any more than that until the object decides to turn around and say hello to our... 
this is really a UFO or a UAP, I highly doubt if it had the ability to get here in the first place from the least the nearest star, that it would still be using solar sails. <laughs> I think it probably has mastered nuclear fusion engines or something even more exotic if we're talking about a Type 2 civilization, let alone a Type 3. Now, Dr. Avi Lloyd said something that I would not rule out as someone who researches UFOs. Or it could be a camouflage just to pretend as if there is nothing when it's going through the habitable zone of the solar system uh, on a reconnaissance mission. I mean, all, all possibilities should be considered and, and ruled out based on evidence. So, so the important thing here is it's, it's science, uh, you know, the standard way that science operates. We should collect as much data as possible and use evidence to express uh, our assessment of what, what it might be. And I agree, as someone who's a witness to summoning a UFO and researching on potential video evidence out there, such as the case of the UFO over the Dome of the Rock back in 2011, so far I would say the evidence is pointing to a phenomenon that is far more, I don't want to say it this way, but supernatural in nature, or maybe we might call it a Type 4 civilization or something more interdimensional. And I think it was Dr. Michio Kaku who I saw speak at my university once who said the first civilization you're going to encounter is probably going to be the most powerful civilization and they're going to pretty much be almost godlike or angelic. And their behaviors and agendas are going to be far more maybe subtle um, and sneaky and possibly deceptive. So they could pull off a stunt like this as a way of testing us psychologically as Stephen Colbert kind of pointed out. The reason why it's probably not aliens is its trajectory around the sun was completely determined by gravitational forces. How do you know? Because we know, we calculate this. We have this laws of gravity, laws well, look, of physics. Look at, this, look at this, see this, see that? That trajectory was completely controlled by gravitational forces after it reached its peak up here and came back down, and yet a thinking creature started the process, okay? It doesn't mean, if this came in, you go, oh, gravity did that, but somebody made it go to here. Checkmate. It sounds crazy that intelligent beings might play this sneaky game of hide and seek with us. It did it with me. And I see a lot of this on YouTube where a lot of video evidence is out there and there really is a high potential that some of these are real. And I think the phenomenon knows it can hide amongst the many fakes, amongst our doubts, our mistrust on this thing we call the internet. They can hide openly. And there's nothing we can do about it because the average person doesn't know how to research deeply to figure out something is authentic on a 2D modder. They could be hiding intentionally in our photos. All I can say is with this photo, it is highly unlikely that this is actually Photoshop. As someone who knows how to use Photoshop and look for the signs of tampering, you'll need to see my video on this specific case. I'll leave a link down below. This could be how they test us. We need to start questioning the behavior of this phenomenon. Most likely there are different types of UFOs, supernatural and natural. I would lean towards Oumuamua being more natural. But if a Oumuamua is a UFO, it will come back to play this game with us. So we will have to wait for its arrival again. This has been Enigma Seeker. Keep seeking those enigmas. Enigma de Bravaccio.